Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm dropping this video, um, I don't know, 12 hours earlier than expected. It's actually Sunday night, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you will either watch it tonight or you'll check it out first thing Monday morning when you do your commute as you head into work. Whatever the case may be, we are going to do the Monday Market Report, and this is for the week ending June 6th, 2021. It's the first MMR of the month, and, uh, you know... Like I had mentioned in the PCMR, the Pocket Change Market Report yesterday, that this is kind of a pivotal time of the year, all right? Normally, customarily, but I'll tell you this much. It's been anything but normal, but customarily, we generally see the market kind of go flat during the summer as people go out and they enjoy just kind of like the things that the summer has to offer and being as that... A lot of people are trying to move on beyond the pandemic, and people are actually making plans to do vacations, go to theme parks, just kind of decompress and take time away from not only the numismatics market, but also collectibles in general. And we're beginning to see some of those preliminary chips to fall um, in other different types of areas of collectibles, like the sports card market, the trading card market with like Pokemon and Magic and all that stuff. We're already beginning to see uh, see some of the markets kind of dip, um, uh, not entirely, but you know, just seeing what I consider to be, and this is probably the first time that I've seen this in about three four years, just a normal regular regular cycle to the collectibles market, and we usually see kind of like a, a more quieter, uh, less turbulent period, um, and that is the summertime. Um, from what I've seen, and I, I actually have just a, an amazing amount of coins to talk about today, all from great collections. There's no other, uh, uh, you know, big time sales per se uh, that we need to focus on. Uh, nothing from Heritage, nothing from um, David Lawrence or Stax Bowers or any of the other auction houses. Uh, but great collections just based off of the amount of material I've seen. It's almost as if the market's not cooling. It's like a runaway freight train. People are still injecting a ton of money into some of the uh, the rarest, uh, you know, rarest in a sense, top pop, highest grade possible for the date. There are a few coins on here, of course, you know, date wise that are, you know, they're produced into the hundreds of millions. So, um, you know, to, to some people, it just doesn't make any sense. But to to collectors and registry set builders and investors. All right, it paints a completely different picture than what, you know, a normal normal person who's really not into the coin market would see. Um, simply incredible. Uh, this week we got 20 coins. I could I could have fit another 10, 15 on here if I wanted to, but I've picked the most relevant coins to talk about and they're like all over the map, you know. We got some of the earliest 20th century coins. Of course, you guys know the Monday Market Report focuses strictly on graded post-1900 coins. Uh, we have just a tremendous list that goes from the earliest of dates, you know, from the teens and, and thereabouts, all the way up to, you're never going to believe it, 2019. Uh, actually, 2021. We have a 2021 coin on the list. And it's not what you're going to expect. It's pretty crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? Again, all from great collections from the past week. And we're just going to address the five-ton elephant, pink elephant in the room um, that I had mentioned in my thumbnail. 2019 West Point Business Strike Lincoln Shield cents. Now, it was a few months ago that I talked about that this is one of those coins that's going to get hot. And sure enough, this is, this is one of the, uh, you know, you heard me say, chips to fall this is going to be one of the first coins to help signify just the overall desirability of such a coin like i had mentioned i had mentioned this long before the 2019 west point suite of like bonus pennies i call them bonus pennies because that's exactly what they were they came uh, as freebies in proof set the silver proof set and the uncirculated mint set in 2019 and i said you know what these coins are awfully special 
They have low mintages, you know, under 500,000. And, um, you know, there, there is a finite amount of them. All right. It's not like they're going to continue to pr produce them and offer them as freebies to the public. And I had told the collective YouTube kind of like coin collector base, you would probably be a good idea to pick up a few of these. And while this one is certainly graded, it shows and illustrates just the pure potential of this coin in a perfect grade. I mean, it's, it is a juggernaut. And, you know, we're, we are two years removed from when this program came to be. It was the most exciting thing that I had talked about two years ago. And then now we're talking about two years after the fact, a coin that is already just, uh, it's, it's affecting the market in a big way. I mean, you know, there's really no other way to describe it. But take a look at this coin. This is beautiful. This is the very coin that you could have gotten as a freebie in those uncirculated mint sets in 2019. All right. I mean, it's the chase coin. That's what you wanted. This one right here is a PCGS mint state 70 red. Sure. It's a perfect grade, but a lot of these were manufactured and produced of the highest quality. It's like proof coins. They normally have what you see kind of like that satiny strike. It's almost like a special mint set strike. Uh, we had actually our next coin illustrates that perfectly. The coin is hammered. The strike is hammered. It's, it's a very lustrous coin, full red. It's a beautiful example of this particular West Point rarity. Um, really, I, I mean, uh, who's this geared toward? Probably it's going to go in a registry set. But also, you could also make the argument that this coin would fit beautifully in a in a collector's portfolio or perhaps an investor type of portfolio. This is a coin with multiple purposes because it's a one shot. It's like the 1943 steel cent. Um, it, and it, it's, it's special in its own right. And I'm going to say this again. If you have the capability, if you have the means to buy some of these raw, I would say that's probably going to be one of the wisest investments that you could that you could do um, in terms of a collectible. Uh, I, there's just going to be no stopping these. The pops will be uh, pretty pretty steady on there. We're not going to see an influx of these coins graded at 70. Most of them come out 68 and 69. Um, but even still, even those coins are beginning to get recognized as as future potential kind of like investment pieces, pieces you could buy for today and then flip you know, five years later on down the road when there's barely any in inventory left in the world um, and you can make a killing. All right. So that's this coin right here. So you guys know it. It sold for $2,531 and 25 cents. Um, and the prices are going to go up. They will over time, you know, a year from now, these things will be three, four grand. All right. Another year from then it's going to go up another 500 to a thousand dollars. I, I mean, it's just one of those coins that will continue to have numismatic star power for the years to come. Definitely keep an eye out for these. If you have the ability, again, to get some raw examples, please do that immediately. All right, so here is one of those SMS Satin Strike coins. Uh, these were produced in sets from 2005 to 2010. It's a relatively short period of time where the U.S. Mint decided to make some of these coins. Now, the coins themselves, the sets, were not really spectacular sellers. So there's not like a whole ton of them out there. I mean, if you went on eBay right now to look specifically for these U.S. Mint SMS sets of 2005 to 2010, you're not going to see a whole bunch of them, all right? So usually uh, these were picked up and they're just, they're stored away somewhere, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, the, these were available during a time when, um, you know, we were kind of on the back nine of the statehood quarters series. They, there was just a lot of things going on during that time. So this one right here is a PCGS SP69 red. It's not even a perfect grade, but still, still manages to make the list. Um, you know, full red example, uh, special strike. And this one sold for $1,730.00. And 25 cents. These coins in a perfect 70 sell for like two to three times that amount of money. So even a coin 
of this type in his 69, which is not the highest grade, still commands a really good amount of money on the secondary market. All right, the next one that we have here is a 1983 Lincoln Memorial set. Uh, this one, of course, is the uh, the uh, the vault vaunted uh, double the die reverse. I mean, you can see how how crazy the doubling is on the reverse of this coin. This is, of course, one of the modern marvels of varieties of the Lincoln set series. And uh, you know, along with the 72, the 69 S, the 84 doubled ear. I mean, you have a ton of coins that, that have kind of like this elite status. Now, this one right here grades out PCGS Mint State 67 red. And, uh, you know, you, you guys probably question, question, well, what's up with the surface of this coin? Well, it is a copper-coated zinc. As we know, during the early 80s, after the changeover from the bronze composition coins to the copper-coated zincs, that the quality was not that good. All right, you had a lot of plate, plating blistering, is what they call it. Um, you had some of the, um, uh, the the stuff in between the actual plating and the zinc core, uh, some of those impurities, and that's why you get coins that look like this. Um, which you know, it, it's not major enough to diminish the overall grade of the coin. Um, it's just a condition of the planchet. This one right here, 67 red, is just a beautiful example. I mean, they, you know, that doubling is is lights out. You know, it, it'll make you go blind if you stare at it too long. This one sold for $1,359, and it is not a top pop grade. All right, so this is probably the most surprising coin on the list. All right, 1950S is not what we would consider to be like a rarity, uh, not by a long stretch. I'm willing to bet you could go to a coin shop right now and find this specific date if you were looking for like a brilliant uncirculated red example for your folder or album. You know, I'm willing to bet you can buy something like this for under a dollar. Okay, maybe even, maybe even cheaper than that. Um, but don't let this coin fool you. This thing is a jug juggernaut. It's a PCGS Mint State 68 red. Of course, it's going to be made and custom tailored to that uh, just super high-end registry set. Um, this one sold for a whopping $11,813.32. Normally, I would say San Francisco minted coins of the 50s, you just, they're, they're better quality than, you know, what you uh, give them credit for. Same with Denver. Um, really where the rarity lies in this particular decade are in the Philadelphia coins. So this was most certainly a very surprising entry into this week's Monday Market Report. But, you know, you can't really argue with nearly $12,000 of just a record sale for this date. Take the money and run. Go ahead and invest it in something else. Up next, we have a 1949. Uh, so we're just one year off from the 50S that we saw before it, but this is a Philadelphia coin. Uh, this one is a PCGS Mid-State 67 Plus full red example. Um, again, made for a registry set. I would never invest in this type of coin right here in this grade, um, especially with the possibility of more coins coming into the woodwork coming out of the woodwork rather in a 67 plus if not a 68 um, this one however is cac certified it's got that green bean sticker right on the label and this one sold for a quite a surprising and very staggering amount of money six thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars Okay, so we haven't talked about a, uh, a steel cent in a few weeks, but here we go. We're back on the train with a 1943S. So we got a San Francisco minted example here for you. This one is a PCGS Mint State 68. All right, sounds familiar. It seems like we talk about a 68 of a Lincoln steel cent every week. Well, except for the last two weeks. Uh, this one's also CAC certified, um, and it's not the top grade at all. I believe 68 plus is. This one right here sold for $4,275, um, which compared to other 43 S's uh, in the last like few months, okay, that's actually about $1,000 to $1,500 more than what the going average is for other mid-state 68 43 S's. 
And we have a 35. Actually, it's quite a marvelous looking date. Uh, the, the coin is very clean, very satiny, very lustrous, um, as you would expect of this date. You know, uh, very well struck also. You can just see the wheat stock lines in the reverse. Um, just a really, really nice registry set coin. Uh, of course, it's a mid-state 68 red, so that... That's um, that's a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, th that's high status right there for a registry set. This particular example sold for $7,681.50. Just off of the last three or four coins alone, well, heck, the whole list up to this point. I, I mean, the market doesn't seem like to be slowing going into the summer months. Am I correct? Okay, so we have our first nickel, uh, about time, right? After through like seven or eight, you know, Lincoln cents, we got a nickel here. This is a 64. Um, you know, it, it is a tougher date for the full steps, and this one is graded by NGC. And they do designate by either five full steps or six full steps. So this one received five full steps. Its numerical grade is a mid-state 67, again, made for registry set i would never invest in something like this if you are looking to put together a numismatic portfolio of coins this one sold for twenty seven hundred dollars and here's a 51s I, I would say bar none probably one of the most uh, uh just overwhelmingly tough dates to find full steps again this is another ngc graded coin also a 67 and as you can see it this one received the five full steps award on the label um you know you can just tell how weakly struck certain areas on the reverse is uh even the mint mark the bottom curls missing so um you know that just kind of corroborates the difficulty of finding these um, with a well strike uh, the luster is pretty nice, you know, where some examples do exhibit kind of like that strong luster. Uh, this one uh, sold for $2,770.88. We can't seem to shake the under 2000 crowd for a lot of these coins. And here's another one. Uh, this one has some uh, beginning progressions of uh, toning. Um, that's what that yellow is. This was probably in an album, you know, for a while. And... Uh, Yellow is the uh, one of the first colors that you will see on toning. All right, and this thing after a while would look pretty magical um, if it had stayed in its uh, storage, you know, um, you know, device or whatever was used—an album, an al envelope, or you know, two by two, or whatever the case may be. Um, as you guys know, this is a silver wartime nickel. You got that big old honking mint mark on the reverse, right above. The monument, uh, this one is a PCGS Mint State 68 full stepper. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, a lot of these wartime silver nickels are particularly well struck with lots of great luster. It's just finding one that doesn't have too many nicks and scratches and planchet, you know, issues. Uh, this one right here is just, it's just a really nice coin. This one sold for $5,950.12. That's a strong sale for this coin. And the same goes for the Philadelphia 1945. This one, however, is a 67 full steps. Again, another coin that, that would fit and slot nicely into a registry set that will never go old, you know, and that's kind of like the driving force to the value of a lot of these coins where 30, 40 years ago when registry sets weren't a thing, these coins in the highest grade level was like 50 bucks, you know. Um, but because of how popular the, the uh, you know, the bragging rights version of, uh, you know, um, of this collecting uh, direction is, you know, that's where we see a lot of the money market kind of just driven right into these particular coins. And it's not going to stop. You know, it's been strong for the last, you know, dozen years or so, and it's going to continue to go up. This particular example in a 67 full steps. Sold for $3,250.12. All right, finally, finally, we have a few Buffalo Nickels. Uh, this one is a 37S, a little bit tougher date, and only because it's a San Francisco. Uh, some of the San Francisco coins of the 30s, in spite of the fact that a lot of them are pretty well minted and available in mint state. This one is a 67 plus through NGC. Um, you know, again, uh, probably a registry set coin. 
uh, you know, fringe, you know, investment collector grade as well. This particular example sold for two thousand eighty one dollars and twenty five cents. All right, so now we're getting into some of the more difficult uh, dates of Buffalo nickel. So anything pre 1930, uh, you could, you could kind of say that those coins can be a little tough to find. Um, and if you did find some graded examples, especially mid state 64, 65 and up prepare to open your wallets and possibly your checkbook. Uh, this one right here, no exception, 1927 D a very tough date and mint mark PCGS mid state 65 plus, um, this is just a pleasing original coin, you know, it, it's not going to wow you with its toning or, or it's a luster because, you know, that, that really didn't exist too well during the twenties, as we know, just the overall manufacturing of coins was a little bit tough, you know, Lincoln sense of the twenties, good luck finding some that were just beaming full red lustrous. Same can be said with the Buffalo nickels. This, this example sold for $4,741.88. Really pleasing looking coin right here. And we have a 24D. It just doesn't get any better than this. I, I mean, this one does show some flashes of luster on the obverse of the coin, you know. Uh, I'm willing to bet that this coin looks a lot better in hand. Uh, it does have a little bit of a lamination. That's still right there, right on United States of America. Uh, this particular example, however, is a PCGS Mint State 66. So that's a pretty nice grade to accompany also a pretty hefty price tag on this one. Uh, we got a price tag of $8,374.50 realized on this 24D. Um, this one you could say is either a registry set coin for a Buffalo registry, or this would make a really good investment coin this is going to be a coin that i'm sure one day will be five figures no problem and finally i think this is the last buffalo of the list this one has a lot of character it's a 1914 period it's a philadelphia minted coin not particularly tough to find or locate in mid state 65 or under um for a reasonable price you can get them for under 100 bucks but this one you know you got some clashing right here under the buffaloes uh, or buffalo uh, the indians uh, chin area um it's just it's a very nice coin again uh, lots of character great great grade mid state 67 through pcgs and this one sold for three thousand two hundred thirty six dollars and 62 cents the last few denominations of the day we got uh like five coins left we got 58 this is the only rosy worth talking about this week uh roosevelt's again you know it's uh, they're the least desirable you know, u.s coin to to uh kind of collect um that still has a lot of tenure all right so th this coin was obviously uh started in 1946 and uh it's still going to this day it's actually the only coin out of the you know more relevant denominations as yet to receive a facelift um, so, you know, by the time that happens, you might see some renewed interest in the Roosevelt dime series. So you might, you might see just an overall influx of new collectors and interest because, uh, this is, you know, for all intents and purposes, the last remaining, what I consider to be affordable series in us coinage. Uh, this one right here, no exception. It's an NGC mid state 67 plus. It's got an FT, so it's got a full torch, uh, full split bands on the torch, and that matters to collectors. This one sold for $1,156.50. The toning is kind of like a love it or hate it affair on this one. I'm a little bit indifferent on it. Um, the toning helps to kind of portray originality. The coin was never dipped or played with, uh, played around with, or altered in any way. This is just an original coin. Now, this is a coin you want to invest in. This is a 25S. So anything pre-1930, I would say, is a uh, pretty good candidate for uh, investment. Uh, this one right here is a PCGS Mint State 65 Plus, and it does have full full split bands on the reverse on the fascies there. Um, overall, just a pleasing coin. I mean, it's a 65 Plus, so you get quality here. Uh, it's also CAC Green Bean, which helps 
in the uh, overall value department. Uh, and this one sold for $4,111.88. Um, good looking coin. And uh, again, a really tough, tough date. Uh, you know, anything mid-20s in either a Denver or San Francisco can get pricey in a hurry. I've seen these coins eclipse five figures, you know, for like a 66 full bands, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, there's just not a lot of them out there to fulfill demand because this is only like one of the most popular series in U.S. coinage. All right, so case in point, this is a problem coin. It's a 1916D, you know, obviously that's the key date for the series. Uh, but take a look at the label. It's a uh, PCGS Genuine Polished XF Detail, all right? But it's on the list, and boy, did it sell for a lot of money. Um, where, you know, in some cases, two collectors, key dates that are generally very well desired, um, will still sell for a lot of money. Um, I think the one thing that this has going for it is that it doesn't have like major damage issues. Like there's no, there's no tooling marks. There's no gashes. There's no scrapes. Like it was a road rash coin, nothing like that. It's just someone did a really poor job trying to clean it. I, I'm willing to bet they, they were trying to eliminate a lot of the black carbon spotting or gunk or whatever that is on the coin and just, um, they went to town, all right, and they, they're, well, they're, it's like, you know, you can't go in half cock. You got to go in all the way, and you got to polish this sucker uh, for what it's worth. Now, you know, not all is lost. You still do have some value, but, you know, the possibilities. If this was a uh, an original, like, XF40, uh, wow, you, you know, this would be a very expensive coin. And it still is, um, you know, it, with the... Details designation, this thing sold for $4,050. Whether you would actually spend that kind of money um, remains to be seen, you know. But this, you know, is probably a decent coin to help fulfill, uh, you know, a date for a set, you know. And I hate to really label this coin as being like the affordable version of this coin but you know it kind of in certain aspects it is and that's why it sold for the amount of money it did all right so we have a few quarters on the list we have this one and the next one i mean polar opposites of course so who would have thought that a tuskegee airman brand new 2021 quarter would make the list well not i until i saw this pop up uh, but yes, you are reading that correctly. This is a San Francisco minted coin, and no, it is not a proof strike. Um, what the U.S. Mint had done is they made available, all right, uh, batches of S Mint business strike coins that are only made available for purchase through the U.S. Mint website. Uh, you could buy a bag of a hundred or a roll or whatever. Uh, this is one of them. And apparently, the quality on these S Mint Business Strike coins is so bad that finding one at the highest possible level can be a challenge. And that's the very reason why that this coin is here. And um, again, you, you know, it's kind of hard to, to believe, but this is a registry set coin. All right. That's the, really no other reason why you would buy this. Um, it's a Mint State 68 through PCGS. And this one sold for $1,743.75. Now, if you're not in the registry site game, obviously you're going to sit there and just like smack your palm into your forehead. And you're like, I could have paid my mortgage with that. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, the, the, there, or, you know, there are other collectibles as well that, that are probably more well deserving of $1,700. Um, but it's just interesting what people are willing to pay, and especially with something like this. It got bid up to that amount. So there was a number of people that obviously engaged in some sort of bidding war for this coin to get it up to $1,700. I mean, you know, um, no, these people are not fools. They are registry set people um, that, that enjoy collecting. They have more money that they know what to do with, and they just love bragging rights. That's what it is. This is the ultimate bragging rights coin right here, if you could find it. Uh, and then finally, I would say, you know, as a purist, this would be my bragging rights coin. It's a 1916 
Standing Liberty Quarter, and you guys know that this is like the, um, the one of the marquee key dates of modern U.S. coins. Uh, there's only what fifty-two thousand of these ever minted, so you know it's not a lot. It, it, I mean, it's like a needle in a haystack. If you have to find one ungraded, good luck with that. Um, your best bet would be to look through dateless standing liberty quarters and you know just going by the drapery and the hair and all that stuff and you could probably find one uh but this one right here uh, i mean look at the stats mid state 64 and yes you read that right it is a full head fully struck example uh cac green bean which is huge on this coin i mean that that adds a whole new kind of like value element uh just a compounding uh, you know value increase of adding a green bean to this thing is just huge. You know, it probably, probably makes this coin 25% more valuable with the CAC sticker than it does without. Um, this one, <laughs> I mean, it's a good way to end it, right? $23,625. That's a, that's a brand new coin, right? A brand new car and a brand new coin. It's both. Both at the same time, you know, if you needed to uh, remodel your backyard, you can even spend it on that too. Uh, but yes, uh, this is a coin that uh, is a target of any type collector and is highly investable to buy the next level. Yeah, you have no idea. But yeah, that was uh, that was a mouthful of a MMR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, a lot of surprising coins from the 2019 West Point Lincoln at the very beginning to the... 1916 SLQ at the very end. Uh, just a great mix of various coins. The market is robust. I'm not going to lie. It seems like it's not slowing down. People are still paying money to own, you know, these little red and gray discs uh, for their satisfaction. And it's going to continue. I have a feeling we're not going to see too much of a lull over the summer. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, you know, a thing, the, the summer isn't officially started till June 21st. So it's still very young and uh, it would be fun just to kind of monitor things and I will be there every step of the way to help kind of paint the picture of how this market is going to shape up for the next three months. But that's going to go ahead and do it. You guys have a pleasant Monday. Don't work so hard. Drive safe or whatever you do. Or if it's a Sunday night and you're watching this thing, uh, you know, enjoy it over a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, unless you want to stay up all night because of the caffeine. Uh, but I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell. You know what it does. And Coinaholics, we are discovering together. You guys take care. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on the next coin video. So long.